Hi, this is episode number 41 of Highlighting the Best of Youth Sports. In this interview, we had Josh Band, the founder and owner of Plate Crate, a monthly box of baseball gear, training aids, apparel, and accessories. But the gold in this episode is the insights from Josh on success, teamwork, baseball coaching, resources, and how athletes can best leverage social media and video during their journey as an athlete. Before we get into today's full episode, we want to say thank you so much again to everyone that has listened and shared the show. We just passed 2,600 downloads, but we still need your help. If you haven't done so yet, please give us a rating and review. It really takes less than 30 seconds and enables us to grow and reach more people, get new guests, and improve and bring you more content. Highlighting the best of youth sports is brought to you by our company, Numbers Don't Lie Productions. We're here to provide you with the highlight video editing resource to support your youth sports journey. We created a simple, quick, and low-cost process that helps you create highlights that document your journey and showcase your athletes. We have featured thousands of athletes in over 40 states and 15 countries. Schedule a free consultation and learn more today at www.numbersdontlie.biz. Now let's get into this episode. Welcome to Highlighting the Best of Youth Sports, where we bring you insights from top athletes, their sports journey, and those positively impacting the youth sports community. If you're ready like we are, let's go. Welcome everyone. Today we have Josh Ban, the founder and owner of Plate Crate, a monthly box of baseball gear, training aids, apparel, and accessories. Josh, Welcome to highlighting the best of you sports. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be on. I'm looking forward to a good conversation. Absolutely. Josh, let's start with you just taking a few moments to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your sports and baseball background and how Plate Crate came to be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I grew up uh, in, the, in the suburbs of Boston, so about 20 minutes north of Boston, a town called Peabody, um, played little league i played high school up to college and then independent ball for a little bit after that um you know i worked my first job was in a batting cage um called extra innings i started working there right when i was 14 and i did all the youth camps growing up and then i started being uh you know camp counselor for you know all the baseball clinics and personal lessons and and just working in a batting cage and and you know always around fall ball and little league and and au baseball growing up and everything um and then went off to college, played at Rollins College um, for four years, um, played second base. I usually like to tell people I'm a middle infielder, but yep. I, I played second base. <laughs> I wish I wish I played more shortstop. And then uh, then I went off and played indie ball. And that's that's actually where, when I started um, Plate Crate in 2015. So, um, you know, as you know, and probably all of your listeners, minor league baseball players, independent baseball players just don't get paid a lot of money at all it's uh it's very much for the you know the love of the sport and for the opportunity to to possibly move up in the system so um play Crate kind of came out of necessity um i saw subscription boxes were getting more popular in 2015 i did a quick google search i realized there's no baseball subscription box which i thought was really weird considering how popular baseball was and i thought with my experience in uh you know working in a batting cage and um, you know, selling bats and gloves and working in baseball retail my whole life and now playing independent ball. Um, you know, I was a good person to start something like this. So started it in 2015. Um, we sold our first crates when I was on the road out of the back of my SUV, came back home, uh, shipped boxes out of my parents' um, basement. And we've just been growing and, and getting better ever since then. So that's kind of the, the quick story. Yeah, it's awesome just to see everything grow and how long, uh, you, you know, how quickly it took off, um, uh, plate crate, but you started this company because you, you love sports and what an amazing thing to be able to build a business and build a career around your passion in, in baseball. Um, the person you are today, how did participating in youth sports help shape who you are? Yeah. Um, probably I'll break it down to probably two big categories that are just like top of mind. Number one was, um, was just being around teammates. Like, I think the older I get, the more I've coached um, at different levels and played, um, you know, working with a team and being a good teammate 
um, is important no matter what you do. It's important for being a good family member, for being a good friend to people, for working and working within groups and teams. Um, I think youth sports is like the best place to just learn how to be a good teammate to people and how to realize that working together, um, you know, as a team is what's going to cause you to win, especially obviously in baseball, since it's a team sport, but, um, you know, realizing you're stronger, you know, with your teammates and helping them get better. And, you know, you see that reciprocity where, um, you know, you're, you're helping your teammate get better. The first thing they want to do is help you get better. And then if everyone's doing that on our team, you have, not only a really fun team to be around with great camaraderie and, um, and great chemistry, but you also have a winning team. And I think you see that with, you know, in MLB players, the, the team that has the most fun is usually winning the world series at the end of the year. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, I grew up in Boston. So, you know, the, the teams that stick out of my head are, you know, you see these teams go through their best friends on and off the field. They help each other work and get better. They hold each other accountable. And I think you learn that in youth sports. Sometimes that fades away with AAU and, and, um, you know, trying to go to college and trying to, you know, work yourself up the ladder in the career, but, um, definitely being a good teammate is probably the number one thing. And I think the second thing is, is coaching. Like you learn from great coaches. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think youth coaches are super underrated because, you know, millions, you know, 2 million people play little league baseball. There's a lot of little league coaches. And I, I think sometimes, they don't realize how much of an impact they can have on a kid's um, confidence on a kid's um, you know, if they haven't excelled so far, how much of an impact a youth coach can make. So um, I remember all my youth coaches throughout the years, good and bad. I remember why i you know, what they made me feel. Um, and a lot of them believed in me and that helped me keep playing baseball. And, and some of them didn't think so highly of me and thought I was a, you know, the short little second baseman that never was going to do anything. And, and that also fueled me, but I think it's important to recognize that, you know, youth coaches are a really big part of, um, you know, a player's career and how they view themselves. Josh. Um, so talk about uh, going back and talking about what fueled you. Um, how do sports and competition help build character uh, at a young age? Um, yeah. I mean, in, in a lot of different ways, I think, um, you know, number one, it's, it's just a lot of work. So I think, um, in terms of persistence, I think persistence is, is one of the most underrated values with, with not just sports, but anything, whether you're, you're, you know, you're going for a job, you're, um, you know, you want, you want to get something done. You want to start a business, just basically any facet of life. I think persistence and patience is, is really important. And, um, you know, competitiveness comes across pretty naturally the, you know, wanting to win, I think wanting to win, I think is important. Um, I think wanting to win is just based on the integrity of the game. Like if you, if you respect baseball and, and your teammates and your coaches and, um, and you value the integrity of the game, like you're, you're, you're going to want to win and play your hardest. Cause that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it competitive. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think persistence is, is really undervalued. Um, I, you know, when I was young, um, you know, I worked really, really obsessively hard at baseball because people told me if, uh, you know, if you, if you work really hard, you can keep playing. And, and I took that to heart. So I, I always made sure that my work ethic was, um, you know, head and shoulders above everybody else, not just a little bit. And, and that actually started to snowball and build because then coaches would tell me, Josh, you're the hardest worker. And then in my head, I would think I'm the hardest worker. And then I'd go work harder. And then I started to keep getting that, um, that feedback loop and it just started to snowball. And I, I mean, it, it starts in youth sports, getting that confidence. Um, and, you know, I'll say like in, in full transparency, my, my little brother went the complete opposite way. He, I was obsessed with baseball and, and, and working hard. And I always qualified myself as a, a baseball nerd. Yeah. I just, I, I really, you know, it was, it was everything to me. And my little brother played it for fun. Um, never really like cared too strongly about it. He, you know, he played it cause I played it. He's five years younger than me, but he had a terrible youth experience because his coach, um, you know, compared him to me and compared him to other players. And, and he had different goals. He wanted to go out there and have fun and socialize with his friends. And, and that is so completely fine when you're playing baseball right. that it, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and he was really demonized for that. And, uh, and he quit baseball, you know, in little league and, and because he had such a bad experience with one coach, and it made such a big impact on, on, 
all of the sports he played and schooling and everything else just because uh, he didn't take baseball as seriously as other people. And, and that is completely fine. Um, but yeah, to bring it back full circle, I mean, persistence and, um, you know, seeing success slowly over long periods of time, I think one of the most important things. Josh, can you talk a little bit how uh, you've seen youth sports change over the past decade, um, specific to how complex um, training uh, uh, has become for youth athletes? Yeah, um, man, a couple different ways. So um, when I was growing up, there was a very, very specific type of way to hit the ball down the hill, through the tunnel, up the hill, squish the bug. Yeah. Um, you know, that that was um, that's how people taught it because I remember our coaches taught us in stills. They taught us in photographs of players, mm -hmm. which isn't the whole story. It's not seeing them swing in motion. It's not live feedback. There's no, there's no analytics or data to go off that. You just see a photo and then coaches would make up the story of how they got to that photo. So they'd show you this point of contact, but in that point of contact, you don't know um, what happened before or after you don't know what type of pitch that was you don't know if they were early or late you don't know the outcome of, of that swing um, so there was like a lot of kind of I don't know false confidence when I guess we were growing up with with and I'm just talking about data and analytics and, right. and feedback um, you know with with just video Instagram and the amount of coaching and, and data that is available now is just I mean, there's like been an explosion of amazing coaches. And I think one of the biggest things I've seen in youth sports right now is you, you don't have to have played in that major leagues to be an absolutely amazing hitting coach. Yeah. I've seen hitting coaches that have played, you know, D3 baseball for a few years and then just became obsessed with swing mechanics. And there's some of the best coaches I know. Um, you know what I mean? It's, but before, before that you're, you're coaching in the, the, you know, how good of a coach you were was based on your resume. How far did you play baseball? How long did you play baseball? Which I think people are starting to realize that it's not a direct correlation between what type of coach you are. So I'm glad that great coaches are finally getting credit because they're, they're getting results because they have the right tools and they can prove it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a completely different world with the swing. Um, and there's some amazing coaches out there and, um, you know, for youth sports, it's, it's open to everybody. Um, you know, before, if you wanted an amazing hitting coach, you had to go see them in person. You had to go travel and, and, uh, and go learn from them in person. Now you can do it online. You can send in feedback. So, okay. I mean, I think basically like great coaching, the biggest difference I've seen between when I was younger and now is like the democratization of just amazing coaches. You can just, anyone can have a great coach at any time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as the training evolves, one of the unique, unique things we've found and, and seen with the crates that you guys provide is that you, you provide training aids. So you're not only getting some really cool swag and some neat things, but you're, you're also getting um, some training aids. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what type of training aids you guys are able to provide and how you keep them fresh and stay up to date? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the number one question people ask me about play craze. Like, how do you come up with so much baseball gear? Um, baseball people in general are, are, I feel like very analytical and they're, we're always coming up with contraptions and different things to, um, to teach better. So some of the things that we put in the crate, um, we have a company called bandit sports, which is also our company, which is, um, that's how we make all these different training aids. So, um, yeah, baseball players, they have a lot of jobs. Um, they have field, stuff to do with fielding, throwing, um, running, hitting, um, hitting in a cage, hitting, you know, during a game. There's, there's a lot of different training aids and accessories people need. And, you know, when I first started Playcrate, the idea was um, I had a lot of friends who had these little inventions. And um, they weren't in Dick sporting goods or models or any big box stores. And I was like, this is what I want to show people. Cause these are the things that I was using, yeah. um, during games, um, or these really niche products that, um, were used only by professionals, but they weren't mainstream enough to be sold in Dick. So those are the things I want to really show people where these are the things that people are actually using that can make a difference. Um, you know, and as we progress through the years and we started manufacturing our own stuff, we could just bring more and more value. So, um, yeah. I mean, every, there's always a training aid in every, in every play crate. Um, it, every month is completely different. Sometimes it's something for fielding or for breaking a glove. 
Um, sometimes it's for speed, like speed ladders or speed shoots, sometimes for hitting and it's like a, a knob cushion grips and, and, um, you know, thumb guards, um, to make sure that you're, you know, the grip in your fingers is right. But, um, yeah, there's, there's a huge variety and play creates a really great way to test out a lot of different gear in a short amount of time. Perfect. Uh, Josh, what are the top two or three resources for baseball players to use, uh, that you would recommend? Um, so I was a hitter, so I wouldn't, I mean, I could talk about pitching a little bit. I would say I'm a big fan of four pitchers driveline driveline is, is, um, you know, really disruptive with how they're breaking down pitchers. They work with, I don't know, like an insane number of MLB players at this point. Um, and again, those, I would qualify them as, as baseball nerds. They have every gadget you can possibly think of, but more importantly, they really understand how to use it and how to take all this data and make it into something actionable. So um, driveline baseball, we don't have any affiliation with them at all. I, yeah. We haven't done this so much as a giveaway or a partnership with them, but I really, really admire and respect those guys over there. Um, and, you know, they're really at the forefront of, um, of all this, you know, new wave coaching and, you know, what to do with all these data points once you actually get them. Um, so they're, they're amazing. And then, um, you know, if I could just name coaches again, I have no affiliation with yeah, any nope. of these people, but, Perfect. you know, if, if I was, if I was 12 and, and I was looking for hitting instructors, um, Matt Antonelli at Antonelli baseball, he was, um, he played for the Padres and he has a really cool story, which I, I don't even think he shares enough, but he was the, this old school type of hitting. Um, he was really struggling, um, And one of his friends who was in the big league kind of taught him this new way of, of hitting. And, uh, and right after that, he made it to the big leagues and he talks about, um, he's just a really great hitting coach. So he's amazing. Brad Marcelino, uh, I think his handle is like Marcelino baseball or Marcelino 13. Um, he works with, with Manny Ramirez, his son and Manny Ramirez and all these different people. Um, I interviewed him for our podcast about hitting and he's just like, he's just a really great coach. So, um, he understands, um, how to communicate really well with people, which is what I admire about him. Um, not only is he very technical, but he knows how to individualize things for people so they can understand it and perform properly. So Brad Marcelino, he's amazing. Um, and I mean, there's a bunch, Bobby Tuxbury is another really, really, um, important hitting coach. He was Josh Donaldson's hitting coach. Um, and he, I mean, he does a lot with hitting. Um, yeah. I mean, those are, those are probably the hitting coaches I would start with. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a ton of resources and I mean, it, even if, if you go on social media and use it the way it, you know, that you can to, to help your game, um, you know, go follow Matt and Brad and, and Bobby Tuxbury. You'll start to see these different accounts and, and find a coach that, um, that relates to you yeah. and, uh, and get the most out of them. And don't, and don't be afraid to reach out and DM them and, and ask them questions because they're, they're more than happy to do it. I've, I've met all these guys and they're, they're all really awesome people too. Yeah, that's great advice. And, and we'll, we'll search for them and we'll, we'll find as many of them as we can and maybe uh, put some links in the show notes as well. Uh, yeah. The show will be right back, but we wanted to thank our national partner, ID Life, for sponsoring today's episode of highlighting the best of youth sports. What separates ID Life from other nutritional brands is its 100% free ID assessment that is tailored to your unique health needs. The answers that you provide generate a confidential report with scientifically backed supplement recommendations, creating your own customized vitamin program. Visit numbersdontlie.idlife.com and take the free assessment today. Now back to the show. So Josh, uh, the name of our company is Numbers Don't Lie. And that name, uh, th- that name has deep meaning in sports uh, for different meaning dip- for different people. Um, what does that phrase numbers don't lie mean to you? One word, accountability. You know, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you're, if you're hitting 275 and, uh, and you don't feel like you're a 275 hitter, that's great. Go, go hit above 275. <laughs> but, uh, uh, if you hit 275, you're a 275 hitter. Um, so yeah, it's the accountability. I mean, taking accountability for yourself, um, and seeing excuses for what they are and, and 
and using those numbers to, to get better. How can young athletes best utilize social media in their sports journey and maybe for recruiting? Yeah. So, um, for social media, I mean, learning, um, is one of them. So you, you know, you can, you can find these coaches that I just talked about and you can learn exactly what they're trying to teach. You can make it your own. You can find out the differences between coaches. Um, but you just have access to so much information and so many amazing coaches online. Um, and so many bad coaches too. And that's up to you to, to kind of, um, you know, get to the good coaches through people, which is why I'm glad you asked me who I recommended because the, the coaches I, I mentioned, I really, really believe in. Um, but yeah, I mean, learning number one, like social media is a great, great, great tool for learning and connecting with coaches and, and people that are going to help you get better. Um, and as a tool for recruiting, um, put your highlight videos online. I mean, it's not, you know, coaches now don't have to, you know, when I was, when I was playing, I had to go to showcases and coaches had to come to those showcases as well. And the stars kind of had to align, but, um, you have a, a camera in your phone, um, take good highlight videos, yeah. um, talk to the coaches, put them online. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're trying to get into a certain college, you're, you're selling yourself on why you make a great fit, not only for your team and for helping a baseball team win, but also for a school. So I always tell kids, especially with grades, grades are never going to like, if you have good grades, it's never, ever going to hurt you. It's only going to help you. And after, after coaching college ball, um, being part of different college teams, um, you know, just being in that world, um, you get crossed off the list without even, with them even looking at your, your batting average or your fielding percentage, if you have bad grades. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's number one, like get the absolute best grades possible because you can level up the college that you go to with good grades because your coach can get you financial aid and mm -hmm. academic aid. And that takes the, the burden off of the team. So he can go out and get other players as well. So you're, you're actually helping your team and helping yourself get recruited by being the smartest kid on your team. So that's number one. Um, and number two, yeah, I mean, make, make a portfolio online of, of, you know, make an Instagram account of, of your swing from different angles, make it, um, give a coach as much information as they can, um, to see what kind of player you are and then back that up with, uh, with a great attitudes and work ethic, good grades and, make it as easy for a coach to say yes to you as possible and just create that environment for them. And, you know, social media is a, is a way to get seen. So um, a lot of these recruiting videos get picked up by big accounts. They get distributed and a coach might say, Oh, that kid's in Southern California. We're looking for a kid like that. Let me reach out to him. So there's websites like, or um, Instagram pages like prospect dugout and youth sports and all these different pages that specifically show highlight reels of, of youth athletes um, to help them get noticed. Um, and even if you're a college player and you want to play indie ball or, or, or you know, sign free agency, um, it's, it's another way. Put your videos online um, so people can see them. If, if no one knows who you are, where you are, they're, they're, they, they can't talk to you. So, Absolutely. And that was actually my next question. So the core of our company is creating uh, highlight videos using content from, from athletes and families that may not have the capabilities to create their own videos. Um, so what, what role in the overall picture of the recruitment process does a highlight video play? Yeah, what, we, what we like to tell people, it's the introduction. You still got to put in the work, you still got to do everything. But from your perspective, what role do those highlight videos play? It's kind of like a uh it's just one step in the process. You know, you could have a beautiful swing, but if your numbers don't back it up, um, you know, numbers don't lie. Yeah. Uh, you know, then, then it doesn't really matter how beautiful your swing is because you can't really put it together. But if you can show a coach your, your pop time, if you're a catcher on video, um, they can, they can see it for themselves. They can believe you. If they, if you show them your swing and they say, this kid has clearly has a great swing, but there's a couple of things I think he could work on, you know, and, you know, these coaches, these coaches can see from, you know, a few videos from you, what type of caliber baseball play you are um, just from a short perspective. And that's, it's definitely not the whole picture, but it's definitely part of the picture as well. Um, right. And it definitely doesn't hurt. So, you know, these recruitment videos, 
you're showing yourself off. You know, you don't have to throw hundred miles an hour, but um, coaches want to see consistency too. If you say you top out at 92, um, cool. Again, numbers don't lie. Yeah. Put it on video, you hitting 92, six times in a row. And, right. and they can see not only the 92, but they can see you're not crow hopping with a, with a four ounce ball. They can see that it's, it's live. Um, and it, it's just kind of that video is, is verifying, you know, what your numbers are. So it just, I think gives coaches more context. Okay, Josh, we're going to transition to our final rapid fire questions and get you out of here. Cool. So what's the best piece of leadership advice you've re- you've ever received? I guess leaders create leaders is, is like, that's the first one that comes to mind. And I really want to think if it's the best advice, but I mean, leaders create leaders is basically, you know, you don't want a team with one leader on it. You want a team where everybody is holding each other accountable. And that's right. what I think with a team of leaders. Um, and then I think the, you know, the, the second thing, I don't even know if this is advice, but it's kind of, kind of like just coalesced over the years is, is, is just being a good teammate. And I think it's so underrated. Um, you know, I changed my perspective when I was playing indie ball and I said, my goal every year was to, you know, hit, hit over 300 steal X amount of bases. And I changed it my last year. And I said, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I was like, I just want to be the best teammate. Um, if someone needs base, you know, extra BP thrown to them, I'll throw it. If someone needs, you know, a pair of shower shoes picked up at Walmart, you know, while I'm there, like I'll, I'll get it. Um, and just really caring about my teammates. And it was kind of like a little experiment and I saw it came back tenfold. People wanted to help me with my swing. People wanted to do favors for me. Um, and it just helped us all get along better and knowing that, you know, I cared deeply about my teammates genuinely. Um, and they cared about me. So, um, and I guess maybe just to, to go one step deeper on that, um, you know, one of my favorite books is Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. And I think that applies to all facets of life. And the the whole book is categorized by take genuine interest in other people. Um, and that's just being, being genuine and being, being authentic with people, um, and always trying to give, you know, more than you receive. And I think if you do that in sports, anywhere else, um, you're setting yourself up, um, to be a leader. Who's your favorite athlete and why? I would say current Mookie Betts, even though he just left Boston. (laughs) Um, I just think is he, he's a humble person. Um, I got, I had a a friend that was on uh, the Lowell spinners with him in single a and, uh, and my friend told me 2013, I think 2014, whenever Mookie was there with him, uh, he's like, this kid's going to be a hall of famer. I was like, that's a bold statement. You're talking about a single a player. Right. Now. right. And, uh, and I looked at him, he was 170 pounds and he was five ten, and his swing was like a little like weird or unconventional. And, and man, he like proved me wrong every step. So I think I just have a, a, a rooting interest in Mookie. Cause I just saw him so early. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he's a massive player and name now. Um, and, and he's a family guy. He, he just had, he had a baby. He's had the same girlfriend or wife, I guess. Now he's always with his family and he, he just seems like he hasn't really lost, um, you know, his humility. So I love Mookie. I've, I'll, he's, he left Boston. He broke everybody's hearts and he moved to LA. But um, I think not only is he an amazing athlete, he's fun to watch. Um, and he treats baseball like a game. He, he, he has a blast with it and, um, and he takes it seriously, which is why we enjoy watching him. And he's, he's a great competitor, but, um, he's doing it for the right reasons. He's doing it because baseball is a fun game and, and he has a, a way to make an impact on people. I don't think he's ever lost sight of that, even though he's a superstar. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I love him as an athlete. I'm in California. My favorite player right now is Mike Trout. Um, yeah. uh, you know, uh, my favorite player growing up was Ozzie Smith. It's Mike Trout now, but so many similarities with Mike Trout and Mookie Betts, just how they play the game. I teach my son, you know, watch him, everything that he does, yeah. uh, and, and how they carry themselves off the field too, is just as impressive, um, yeah. as, as how they carry themselves on the field. Yeah. I mean, I could have, I could have said Mike Trout second, but I mean, Mookie with Boston, but yeah, Mike Trout, I, I, I get it. <laughs> same thing. He just, he gets that he has a massive impact and he's, he's really, he's using his platform for, for the right reasons. And I, I just respect both of them a lot. Absolutely. Who's your favorite coach and why? 
Man, favorite coach. Um, I would say my, I always tell the story of my, my high school coach, Mark Betancourt. He's still at Peabody high school. Um, I've had a lot of great coaches, um, a lot of really great coaches, but he, um, he was a police officer and, you know, I was, I was his, you know, I was a freshman when it was his first year of coaching. So I was kind of like his, his first, his first guy. Um, and man, he just, he just really deeply cared about, um, his team. And again, like he took genuine interest in other people. He really cared about our grades and cared if we were okay um, and cared where we went to college and cared what we did off the field and, and not in like a big brother type of way, but in a, in a genuine way. And, uh, how I always see him in my head is, um, we had a game, we had a night game on like a Friday. I played shortstop. Um, we had a, we were on a really rough, you know, our, our high school had a really bad field, like really rough. We're in new England. So it's like first day of practice, we shovel snow off the field, like that type of field. <laughs> and, um, I remember it was like 7.20 in the morning. We just got to school. He just came off a 24-hour shift and was redragging our field because he doesn't like the way the city did it. <laughs> he, he, he wanted a better field for everybody. And I'll, I just always remember that as um, no one knew that – like he didn't know anyone could see him. He didn't know I was watching. I still don't think he even knows I saw that. But he was dragging the field, raking shortstop because the city just d- did a once-over and he wanted to make sure it was perfect for everybody. And and we took it for granted. We get to the field and we have a beautiful, you know, dragged field and we just assume the city did it. And, uh, and I've always seen that as just, you know, such an expression of just caring about people without asking for anything in return. And, and, uh, and he did it right after a 24 hour shift. So I know he had, you know, he could have just went home and, and went to sleep, but he had to drag the field instead. So, um, yeah, shout out to, to coach Betts. Awesome. We, we love asking all these final rapid fire questions because we get so much insight, especially for those that are have a business or coaching or influencing you sports. But anyhow, the last question is, where can people follow you or uh, and follow Plate Crate and learn more about everything that you're doing with the subscription boxes? Sure. Yeah. So you can go to www.platecrate.com. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. We have a really fun Instagram. We do tons of giveaways with companies and, uh, we post tons of content and that's just at plate crate. Um, you can follow me personally at Josh plate crate and we do behind the scenes. And if you have a question or you want, you know, to follow up on some of the coaches or something, you can always DM me and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, that's it. You can find more information, you know, at plate crate or just platecrate.com. Awesome. Thank you, Josh, so much for being with us today. Uh, I really appreciate you. Um, I know you're super busy. Uh, you know, you have a young family, but also a, a thriving business. And I, I can't thank you enough. And, and we're excited to get this episode out. Awesome. Thanks so much. That was fun. We hope you enjoyed this episode of highlighting the best of youth sports. Be sure and subscribe and please help us reach more people by leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform of choice. If you or someone you know are interested in learning more about Numbers Don't Lie and what we do, what programs and services we offer for athletes, and how to get your athlete involved, be sure to visit numbersdontlie.biz. Until our next episode, go out and win the day and never miss your opportunity to be great. Thanks for listening to Highlighting the Best of Youth Sports.